in the last presentation i have introduced you to the concept of lists now in this presentation we will understand how to access individual elements of a list so without any further delay let's get started with this lecture the first topic is accessing elements of a single dimensional list the second topic is negative indexing the third topic is accessing elements of a multi dimensional list after discussing these topics we will move on to the homework problem of this presentation so without any further delay let's get started with the first topic that is accessing elements of a single dimensional list you might have not heard this term single dimensional list what is the meaning of a single dimensional list is important for us to understand before understanding how to access individual elements of a single dimensional list a single dimensional list is a list where elements are listed one after the other so a single dimensional list is simply a list where elements are stored or listed one after the other if you remember in the last presentation that is introduction to lists i have shown a list of items that specific list is a single dimensional list i told you already how to create a simple list a simple list is nothing more than a single dimensional list so a single dimensional list is a list where elements are stored or listed one after the other and it is important to understand that each element is allotted a unique number called index we know this already that if we want to access individual elements of a list we can access individual elements by their index so with index of a specific element we can access that element if we are interested in accessing the entire list then we just need to specify the name of the list but if we are interested in accessing a specific element we need to access it through its index now let's understand with the help of an example how a single dimensional list looks like so let's consider one simple example let's say that we are interested in creating a list containing multiples of 5 up to 20 so we want to store a total of four elements in the list starting from 5 up to 20 as we want to store the multiples of 5 so the elements will be 5 10 15 and 20 as we want to store up to 20 so we must end at 20 so there will be total four elements in the list now let's create one list let's say that the name of the list is my list and as we want to store four elements we can specify those four elements one by one in the list in order to do this we first need to write the name of the list my list then we need to specify the equal sign which is the assignment operator then within square brackets we need to put all the elements we want to store within this list this is a variable as this variable is pointing to this list we can access this list through this variable my list within this list we have a total of four elements 5 10 15 and 20 so this list contains multiples of 5 up to 20 now what is the visual representation of this list we have seen the visual representation of a single dimensional list in the introduction lecture this is how our my list looks like so this is the my list list with a total of four elements and the index of each element is mentioned here the first element has index 0 we have learned this already in the last lecture as the length of this list is 4 therefore the last element must have the index number 3 it is always one less than the length of the list so the indices are 0 1 2 and 3 now let's learn how to access individual elements of this list we can access any element of this list with the help of its index let's say that we are interested in accessing the first element of this list which is 5 if we want to access this element 5 we need to specify its index within square brackets but first we need to write the name of the list 
So first comes the name of the list, then after this square brackets and within square brackets, we need to specify index number 0 in order to access this element. Therefore, in order to access this element, we need to write my list within square brackets 0 in order to access this element. So eventually we will get this element 5 as my list 0 is equal to 5. Now, what if we want to access this element 15? We need to specify index number 2 within square brackets. So, we need to write my list within square brackets 2 in order to access this element. I hope the concept is completely clear how to access individual elements of a single dimensional list. Now, let's move on to the next topic that is negative indexing. What is the meaning of negative indexing? We can access individual elements of a list through positive indices. We have learned this already. Now, let's learn how to access individual elements of a list through negative indexing. Negative indexing is all about accessing elements from the last. Now, what do we mean by accessing elements from the last? Let's see this with the help of an example. Again, we will consider the same list with multiples of 5 up to 20. So, let's consider the same list, my list, with a total of 4 elements 5, 10, 15 and 20. The positive indices are mentioned here. Now, I would like to mention here that Python provides us this facility to access individual elements through their negative indices. Now, what do we mean by this? It is interesting to know that the last element of any list has an index minus 1. Similarly, the second last element of the list has index minus 2. The third last element will have index minus 3. And in this way, we can assign negative index to each element starting from the last, not from the first. So, the last element in this list has index minus 1, the second last element has index minus 2, the third last element has index minus 3, and the first element of this list will have index minus 4. So, these are all the negative indices of these elements. So, if we want to access this element, we can access it through its negative index also, which is minus 1. Negative indexing is useful in scenarios where we don't know the length of the list and we want to access the last element of the list. The last element of any list definitely has an index of minus 1. So, we can access the last element through its negative index also. Let's say that we are interested in accessing the last element or this element 20 of this list and that too through its negative index. For this, we need to specify minus 1 within square brackets, like this. We first have to write the name of the list, that is my list, and within square brackets, we need to specify minus 1 in order to access element 20. Now, what if we want to access the first element, that is element 5? To do this, we need to specify minus 4 within square brackets. So, we need to write my list minus 4 within square brackets in order to access this element 5. I hope with this, it is also clear how negative indexing works. Now, let's move on to the next topic that is accessing elements of a multi-dimensional list. We have learned this that how to access individual elements of a single dimensional list. Now, before understanding how to access individual elements of a multi-dimensional list, we need to understand what is a multidimensional list. A multidimensional list is a list containing another list. So, a multidimensional list is a list that contains at least one list as an element of it. Now, what do I mean by this? This will be clear with the help of an example. Let's consider one simple example. Let's say that we have this list, my list 2, with a total of 3 elements, where the first element is a list with 3 elements 1, 2 and 3. 
as you can observe that the first element is itself a list the second element is the string nesso and the third element is also a list with three elements 4 5 and 6 so my list 2 has a total of three elements where first and third elements are lists therefore we can conclude that this list is a multi dimensional list as at least one element of this list is a list now let's see how to visually represent this list and see what are the indices of each and every element of this list the visual representation of this list looks like this we need to draw three boxes in order to represent the three memory blocks because we want to store three elements of this list my list 2 so my list 2 has a total of three memory blocks the first memory block has an index 0 the second memory block has an index 1 and the third memory block has an index 2 as we have a total of 3 elements in this list therefore we need to draw 3 memory blocks and each memory block has an index the first memory block has an index 0 second memory block has an index 1 and third memory block has an index 2 now let's store each and every element of this list my list 2 let's first store the first element of this list which is a list itself So the first element is a list with a total of 3 items 1 2 and 3. We need to store this list in the first memory block as this list is the first element of this list my list 2. So let's create this list within this memory block. Now we have this list with a total of 3 items 1 2 and 3. Now let's do the indexing. The first element has an index 0, the second element has an index 1 and the third element has an index 2. I hope this is clear. Now what about the second element of this list my list 2? The second element is a string. We have this string nesso. We now need to store this string within this memory block. What about the third element of this list my list 2? The third element is the list containing 3 items 4 5 and 6. So let's create a list with a total of 3 items 4 5 and 6 within this memory block. Now we have this list with 3 items 4 5 and 6. The first item has an index 0, the second item has an index 1 and the third item has an index 2. This is the complete visual representation of my list 2. With this I hope it is clear how a multidimensional list looks like. Now how about accessing elements of this list my list 2. Let's say that we are interested in accessing this value 1. How to access this element? In order to access this element first we need to access this memory block because this element is within this list and this list is contained within this memory block and in order to access this memory block we need to specify zero within square brackets in this way we can access this memory block we can go inside this memory block now after going inside this memory block we now can access this element through its index which is zero This means we need another pair of square brackets where we can specify 0 in order to access this element. So in this way we can access this element. The first thing is to write the name of the list, then within square brackets we need to specify the index of this memory block which is 0 and then within another pair of square brackets we need to specify index 0 in order to access this element. So we need to write my list 2 within square brackets 0 in order to access this memory block and then within another pair of square brackets we need to specify 0 in order to access this element so we will get 1 by simply writing this now what if we want to access this entire list 
not just one element of this list, but this entire list. This list is contained within this memory block which has an index 2. Therefore, we just need one pair of square brackets and we need to write 2 within that pair of square brackets in order to access this entire list. So, first we need to write the name of the list which is my list 2 and then within square brackets we need to specify index 2 in order to access this entire list. So, let's write my list 2 and within square brackets 2 in order to access this list. So, we'll get this entire list with 3 elements 4, 5 and 6. I hope it is clear how to access individual elements of a multi-dimensional list. Now, as we have understood how a multi-dimensional list looks like and how to access individual elements of that list, let's move on to the homework problem of this presentation. Consider the following list. We have this list my list 3 which consists of these elements. Now, my question is how to access the value b in the above list. So, your job is to access this value, this value b in this list. So, I would request you to post your answers in the comments section after finding the answer to this problem. So, with this we are done with this lecture. We have understood what is a single dimensional list and how to access individual elements of a single dimensional list. We have understood what is negative indexing and we have also understood what is a multi-dimensional list and how to access its elements. And finally, we ended the lecture with the homework problem. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.